everybody. Today I'm going to be reading The Sleeping Porch and this book is written by Karen Ackerman and illustrated by Elizabeth Sales. So take a look at the cover and I want you to think about what this book might be about. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, a porch is just a little spot that you sit at outside of your house and it usually is covered cloud with a lightning bolt, some rain, so that could maybe relate to the story. We'll see. Last year, our parents bought their very first house. My younger brothers, Mitch and Hal, and sisters, Becca and Lily, still had to share bedrooms and closets, but they were very excited anyway. As the oldest, I got a bedroom to myself, which I thought was great, but none of us imagined how much trouble the house would turn out to be. We lived in a small apartment and sometimes our parents got cranky because we were always bumping into each other in the halls and doorways. I feel like I'm living in a Cracker Jack box, Mom would groan, usually when she was trying to find room to put something away, and there wasn't any room. Won't we ever have a house of our own, she'd ask Dad. Dad would laugh and say, I should have been born a Rockefeller, and though we didn't know exactly what a Rockefeller was, we laughed too because it sounded funny. Then one day, Mom and Dad told us that they'd bought a house. We all begged to see it, and Dad said, let's take them on a pass-by. So we piled into the car. So they're going to go drive by and look at the house. When Dad stopped in front of the house, we thought we were dreaming. It was bigger than any of us could believe, though it needed some paint and fixing up. You'll finally have your own room, Jonathan, Mom said to me. And there's a sleeping porch. What's that, Mom? Mitch asked from the back seat. See over there on the right? It's built on the side of the house and all screened in, she answered. When I was a girl, our house had one too. Screen porch is right here. The day we moved in, Mom sighed. Oh, this is the happiest day of my life. And we felt the same way. Mitch and Hal started to stuff things in their closet and thumbtack kung fu posters up on the walls. Becca and Lily unpacked dolls and stuffed animals and lined them on their twin beds. Mom covered the kitchen cabinet shelves with paper and unpacked ditch dishes, pots, and, plant, and pans. Come on, Jonathan, Dad said to me, and I helped him carry the storage boxes into the basement and garage. By the time most of the packing boxes were emptied, we were starting to feel at home in our new house. Then, one hot summer night, there was a terrible rainstorm, thunderstorm, and all the lights went out. It's okay, Dad reassured us, and he got out his flashlight while Mom lit a few candles. But then we heard a dripping sound everywhere. Water suddenly poured through the roof into the bedrooms, dining room, family room, kitchen, and bathrooms. Mom rushed to get pots and pans from the kitchen and told us to put them under the drips. Dad tried to stop the leaks with duct tape, and the rest of us ran around in the candlelight searching for drips. Oh no! So it starts raining and their house is leaking. But there were too many, and we gave up laughing, playing in the raindrop waterfall, and having splash fights. The thunder was so loud that Lily started to cry and Becca crawled under the dining room table. We huddled together with candles and Dad's flashlight till the storm was over. So the boys, the brothers, 
they're enjoying this thunderstorm, but the sisters are really scared. See. There wasn't a dry place left inside. The bedroom carpets were soaked, the kitchen floor was flooded, and the dining room walls were streaked from dripping water. Now what? Dad moaned, looking at the ruined carpets and walls. Where are we going to sleep? How about the sleeping porch? Mom softly asked. Hmm, okay. So we got some pillow sheets and light summer blankets from the upstairs linen closet and we followed Mom down the hallway where Dad waited with an armful of pillows and bed sheets from their room. Then we all trailed out to the sleeping porch in one long line of cranky, unhappy people in damp PJs. <laughs> the air was so steamy that it was almost hard to breathe, but suddenly a breeze came through the screens like someone softly blowing on the backs of our necks. The wind chimes tinkled, the stars twinkled, and everything smelled fresh and green like a forest. Mom helped us fold the blankets into sleeping bags, tucked the sheets in and under the pillows on top, and put the blanket bags together in a circle, heads in and feet out, like the spokes of a wagon wheel. Cool. Dad lit some citronella candles because mosquitoes were getting in through a few holes in the screens and the smell of lemons and candle wax filled our noses. Crickets sang a dancing snappy castanet song and June bugs buzzed at the screens. Everyone settled down listening to the night music and watching fireflies. This is great, I whispered to Dad and he smiled for the first time all night. He and Mom chuckled as they arranged their elbows and knees to snuggle together in their blanket bags. It's just like I remember, Dan, Mom sighed to Dad. Isn't this wonderful? I heard him say, uh-huh, before I fell asleep. Since then, the leaky roof has been fixed and the sleeping porch guests used for a lot of things. Since then, the leaky roof has been fixed and the sleeping porch gets used for a lot of things. In the fall, Dad and I set up a folding table and helped Mitch, Hal, Becca, and Lily carve pumpkins. On Halloween, the sleeping porch is full of funny-faced jack-o'-lanterns with candles burning inside. In the winter, we pile our sleds and boots in a corner near the door. Hats, gloves, and scarves go in a crate marked Idaho Spuds that Mom got from Meyer's Grocery. All winter, I help Becca and Lily in and out of their snowsuits and remind Mitch and Hill not to rack, I'm sorry, not to track snow in on the brand new carpets. So there's many uses for this porch, right? They're really using it at all seasons of the year. In the spring, Mom sets up rows and rows of seedlings in little pots for her summer garden. A few weeks later, the sleeping porch is full of tiny flowering buds in a zillion colors, ready for all of us to help Mom plant one afternoon in May. But in the summer, there's always a hot and stormy night when we're sitting around listening to the rain and thunder outside and one of us just has to ask, how about the sleeping porch? So even though the roof doesn't leak anymore, we'll get our sheets and blankets and pillows and out we'll march in the long line of, a ha of happy people in PJs and we'll settle down for the night in our very own special place, the sleeping porch. That was The Sleeping Porch. I hope you guys liked it. See you next time.